Well, the story of the glacier health in the Himalayas varies from valley to valley, and it depends on which direction the glacier is facing. There's no doubt at all that changes over the last 100 years have been in gen a general retreat, uh, and that throughout much of the Himalayas, that retreat has increased uh, quite dramatically in the last 20 years. My name is Paul Majewski, and I'm the director of the Climate Change Institute at the University of Maine. I've spent the last 40 years running expeditions throughout many parts of the world, including the Nepalese, Indian, and uh, Chinese Himalayas. Climate Change Institute at the University of Maine is one of the oldest climate research units in North America. Uh, we're a little over 40 years old, and when we talk about climate, we don't just talk about the physical climate, temperature. We're also interested in chemical changes in the climate system, biological associations, and also social implications of climate change. One of the uh, methodologies that we use in the Climate Change Institute is to recover ice cores, and that happens to be my specialty. Uh, we go to high elevation areas, 24,000 feet in the Everest region, super cold areas in the middle of Antarctica where the mean annual temperature is about minus 52 degrees. In the late 1970s, we started to recover ice cores, and we may very well be the first group ever to recover ice cores from the Himalayas. We went up to elevations of about 20,000 feet. Uh, today, we have to go higher because the temperatures are warming and we're losing these records, uh, and we would recover ice cores. Mountain environments, in particular places like the Himalayas, are very complicated when it comes to understanding uh, the precipitation patterns, temperature patterns, uh, and that's because there are obviously highs, lows, very deep valleys that are uh, disconnected from the passage of some air masses. But if you put together all of the things that we know nowadays, based on a whole series of expeditions, including our satellite imagery, uh, weather stations that have been in, in places like India for well over a hundred years, there is clearly an emerging pattern. And that emerging pattern is that in the last hundred plus years, uh, the glaciers have in general been uh, retreating. Uh, in the last 20 years, they've been retreating much more dramatically. In the Himalayas, the temperature rise in the last few decades has probably been on the order of about one degree centigrade, some places a little bit less. The expectation is that that will clearly increase, uh, without a doubt. By 2100, all of the, uh, the predictions suggest at least two, three, possibly four degree centigrade rise. Uh, in places where glaciers exist, like the Himalayas, uh, the effects are going to be even bigger because obviously uh, along the edge of a glacier, the temperature is very, very close to uh, the freezing temperature, and that's where you see the biggest changes. And, it, and that, of course, begins the whole discussion of what the health of these glaciers is, how much snow do they have, uh, how have changes in temperature impacted them, how much temperature change uh, has occurred. Uh, the warmer it gets, the more likely the precipitation will come in the form of rain and not snow, so you don't get water storage. Uh, and of course, the warmer the climate gets, the more likely the glaciers will melt. When you hike in the Himalayas, you're absolutely uh, blown away by the potential for water flow in springtime. There are string bridges which cross the valleys, and, and they're up fairly high for a variety of reasons, but one of those reasons, that one of the reasons that the string bridges are so high is that on occasion, boulders uh, bounce out of the river beds, and these boulders can be very, very large, hit the, uh, the string bridges and, and knock them out. And this is the only mechanism by which people can cross those streams and get from one side of the valley to the other. A very significant percentage of the world's population is, gets its fresh water from uh, Himalayan glaciers. The likelihood is that runoff will be extremely strong uh, over the next few decades, uh, providing great challenges to people uh, as these glaciers begin to melt more and more.